Hi, I'm Keith McCullough and welcome to another Real Conversation. This one's going to be a little different than prior Real Conversations. Uh, while I am familiar with the quads, I have not used a quad box yet. However, we have four, uh, you know, not in any particular <laughs> order here, uh, the four of us, and, and uh, we're going to go one by one first, guys. But uh, first of all, welcome to um, Cormac, uh, who's our diamonds guy. We have Anthony, who's obviously uh, familiar to Hedge Eye Nation, uh, who's our wine guy. And we have the new guy, Artem, who's going to talk about ag. So whether we're buying farms or we're buying farmland or we're buying diamonds or wine, I own one of those three, full disclosure. Um, Probably too much of it, my wife would say, but uh, the, good, the good news with that liquid acid is that I can drink it. That's the downside. Uh, I don't own the other two, so I, I'm going to spend some time, uh, just like the audience, learning uh, alongside them in terms of not only you know, the, the scarcity of the assets, but the attributes of the assets, the volatility of the assets, everything we like to talk about, uh, but how to implement that. So, um, um, uh, Cormac, why don't we do uh, you next, and let, can, if you can hit on uh, all three of those points, again, hitting on access, scarcity, and the volatility of it all. Yeah, so, so diamonds are a very interesting asset. You know, it's a, it's a very large value natural resource. People all know about diamonds, but the problem is that diamonds have always been out of reach to investors because every diamond is a little bit different, and there's never been price transparency or liquidity, and therefore the friction of trading diamonds has always been you know, uh, way off the charts. My background is I was a, you know, studied computer science and spent many years as a quantitative portfolio manager, mainly for Paul Tudor Jones and uh, Millennium at uh, Izzy Englander. And that background turned out to be exactly the right set of skills to create a diamond commodity. And I'm sure you've, everyone's seen it, but these are diamond standard bars. And the diamonds are inside. But the breakthrough is that these two bars are equivalent because the carat weights, the clarities, the colors are all optimized. They add up to a public standard. And the, the concept is very simple. By creating a fungible commodity for the very first time for diamonds, you can have that price discovery. You can have trading and liquidity. And last year, we had a significant breakthrough that these commodities were approved as good for delivery to settle CFTC regulated futures and options. Uh, and we have a listing agreement, for example, that will result in futures being traded on the MJEX and on the CME. And as those futures become available, as we have ETFs, diamonds become much more like gold in that it's a, a liquid commodity that you can trade, you can buy, you can sell with very, very tight spreads. And already we've brought the spreads of diamond trading. Like if you sell your investment diamond at Sotheby's, you'll pay a 20 some percent commission. Hmm. We've gotten our friction, the, the spread in our spot market, we launched a spot market earlier this year, that's about, you know, 30 basis points. So we've we've divided by a, uh, two factors, the, the amount of, of spread and friction. Now, the concept is that once you have access to liquidity and low friction and trading products, that's going to entice the investors of the world to start to allocate two diamonds as just one more precious metal, basically. And for example, it's listed on Bloomberg right now under DIAM as a precious metal index. And the issue with diamonds is that like wine, they're, they're very scarce. There's a, there's a great constraint on, on diamond production. And the interesting fact that people are surprised about is that there's been no new diamond mines discovered in over 20 years. The last mines were discovered up in way northern Canada in the Arctic. And since then, they haven't found any more. They found some diamonds out to sea off the southern tip of Africa and off of Botswana. And it's basically, you know, diamonds are created from these ancient volcanoes. And what happens is a river underground will run through it and wash the diamonds out to sea. So that's the only new diamonds they found. 
And so the, the production of diamonds has actually been diminishing by three to 6% per year. And that's expected to continue, in fact, to accelerate in declining. But at the same time, the demand for diamonds, except for very recently, but the demand for diamonds has been growing fairly consistently at about 3 to 5% per year. So you have a rising demand, falling supply, and that's a recipe for price inflation. And in fact, between 2020 and and 2022, the prices rose about 40%. They've since come back. So since 2020, uh, they're up about 13%. What we expect, though, is that as investors start to build a position, and especially as the ETF becomes available, for example, we have filed an ETF uh, for, to list on the New York Stock Exchange. That's going to take a while to get approved. But once that does, and when we have a national market price available from the CM, uh, CME listing, that instantly unlocks allocations from pensions, endowments, sovereign wealth funds. Of course, right now we have a lot of family offices. We have about 5,000 customers that have built positions. But we expect that institutional demand to have a very significant impact on diamond prices especially when there's a lack of, of new supply. Um, so that dynamic is, is the key driver of demand, falling supply, institutional allocations being uh, possible. The second thing that's, that's a little bit interesting, it's a little what we call the moonshot, is that inside the bar is a wireless computer chip. You can see it, it's that white layer. And that chip, we built it to provide auditing, for example. If BlackRock owns this, they can audit it in the vault. And it also provides authentication. If I hand this to you, Keith, you can authenticate the bar and, and prove that it's real. But most importantly, this chip stores a blockchain token. Huh. And we have the world's only regulatory license for a commodity token. And so when you own this, it sits in a vault like Brinks, and the moment it's in the vault, their wireless sensor detects the commodity and it delivers a, a blockchain token mm -hmm. to the owner. Once you own that token, you can sell it. That's what people sell on our, on our spot market. Turns out that is the key breakthrough uh, to enable a global commodity currency. And you can imagine a currency that comes out of a blockchain native commodity is not a security and it's actually not a virtual currency which is kind of the latest laws from the irs so one big use case that's really exclusive to diamond commodities is that it can create this global uh, currency product which, which is fully asset backed hmm. you asked about volatility so the volatility of diamonds is extraordinarily low it's about 3.8 percent um which is you know half of what gold is is or it's, you know half gold, a little bit less than half of gold uh, but also the correlation of diamonds as a as a former quant i've never seen another asset that has zero correlation to its peers gold silver platinum diamonds have nearly zero correlation and they have near zero correlation to stocks and bonds so if you go back to the four or five uh you know, his, recent historical financial crises, diamonds really have outperformed uh, gold very, very substantially, which is the normal hedge and uh, safety. Um, so those are the key aspects of, of diamonds. That's really cool. Uh, these, so these, um, I have these as well. Um, are these in particular, so these are, uh, I guess they have this integrated wireless technology in it. Are these the two, you know, are these the two sizes that you'd get or the, you know, are these two things? I mean, I'm assuming they're uh, this one's worth more than this one. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so uh, the challenge we had, it's all based on statistics and math and optimization. We use, we incorporate about 92 percent of all the different sizes, shapes of diamonds. Yep. All the different carat weights, colors and when we produce a commodity, we have we have no opinion on diamond prices. We've used automated market making to buy all the diamonds transparently on an exchange. 
And so we have to bid on 90% of all the different diamond types. That's over 16 million different types of diamonds. Wow. And to create a statistical sample, we had to break it up because we can't buy, uh, you know, giant samples of every possible type of diamond. So the coins have diamonds that are 0.23 to, to 0.75 carats. So they're all smaller diamonds. And the bars have 0.76 to 2.05 carat diamonds. So you can see they're all larger. And when we build these, we have to buy about $15 million worth of diamonds at a time to prove that we have a statistically valid sample. When we make the bars, we have to buy about uh, $65 million mm -hmm. worth of diamonds at a time. So we had to break it up. Yeah, that's, that's um, I mean, talk about innovation. I mean, I mean, there, there's such a lack of um, education on these things. I mean, so thank you, for first of all, for, for all of you for providing that. I mean, at a base level, nobody should be investing in anything until they, you know, get educated on supply, demand, scarcity. Ormac's a good example, right? where, where, you know, that's one where I've not bought, you know, I've not bought into any diamond standard product, but now it's sitting here looking me in the face again, asking me why, and I own, way too much gold, uh, enough silver, and no uh, diamond exposure, which to me would be the same asset allocation. Um, but on that, like, you know, I, I guess, a, full disclosure too, Daryl Jones, for example, Anthony, uh, it, invested in VinoVest, and then he'd start to come to me every other week and tell me, hey, do you know that this thing just doesn't go down? And, and that's, that's one way to talk people into it, right? It doesn't go down. <laughs> so that's, I, I think getting your toe in the, in, in, you know, I have my toe more, more in the water in terms of my investment in wine in the aggregate um, you know, than I'd like to admit, like I said. But, but on diamonds, Cormac, is, it, is there a sticker shock? Is there regulation? Like what would get somebody like me to just say, nah, I'm gonna pass? Well, there, there is a price hurdle. So the right. coin right now, these are 4,750 bucks or so. Okay. And we don't we don't set that price. We look it up. We see it every morning on Bloomberg, and that's what they're trading at. The benefit and the, and the really big distinction with with a commodity is that these are not securities, so we can sell them to anybody, no accreditation, and you can sell it back twenty four hours a day. So once you have your coin, if you decide I want to adjust my position, you just list it on the spot market, and now you have instant liquidity. Yep. Um, so, but like Vino Best, a, a big challenge is education. And with diamonds, we have an uphill battle because there's a lot of misconceptions about diamonds. You know, people think, oh, De Beers controls the market. They don't. It was, De Beers was broken up 20 some years ago. <laughs> uh, they, they saw that movie Blood Diamonds. They think that diamonds have some kind of a negative connotation. They don't. They've lifted entire countries of Africa out of poverty and created, you know, world-class educational systems, you know, creates tens of thousands of jobs and, and economic substance. Um, or they think the prices are manipulated and mm -hmm. our prices are all transparent. They're, we're, we are regulated. So we have, as I mentioned, a regulatory license. We're audited by Deloitte. So our key was to establish that credibility initially that got a lot of interest from family offices, and that's by far our largest category of clients. And a lot of them are afraid of stocks or bonds crashing, and they wanted something that's tangible that they could they could actually hold. Mm -hmm. um, but what's happened now is now that we've you know we're, we expect to pass this year about 300 million of of total diamond commodities out into the market. What's happened is that because we have a regulatory approval as a commodity. We've now got a lot of interest from Wall Street, and we have a lot of asset managers and, and ETF sponsors and futures brokers. And for example, we just signed a distribution agreement with the largest bullion distributor that covers Merrill Lynch, UBS, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs. They provide all the gold to the wealth management departments of those firms, and now they can add, uh, they can make diamonds available. That's called GVI. Mm -hmm. is the name of that company. As I mentioned, we filed an ETF uh, in partnership with the New York Stock Exchange, and we have two major underwriters. Two of the money center banks have agreed to underwrite that. So we passed the new product committee, the underwriting committee of major, major banks. And so for us, we're 
a little different from the vino vest and and the uh, and farmland is we can very quickly create etfs futures and institutional products and that's the channel that we go down and we're going to we're, we're retracting from selling to consumers in fact i think by the end of this year we'll no longer sell our commodities directly to consumers they'll buy them through bullion distributors or security sponsors. Yeah, and, and they'll buy, <laughs> as soon as I start signaling in real-time alerts to whip around your ETFs, they'll be doing it that way too. I mean, there's, there's going to be, and that's a big thing. I mean, it's not like the diamond market, um, you know, the, the, the value of it hasn't been established. I believe it's larger than silver and platinum combined. Is, is that fair yeah. or no? About 1.2 trillion. That's the above yeah. ground value of diamonds, and there's about 30 billion of new production. So it's, you know, similar to gold, a 2% stock to, to flow ratio. Yeah. So quite low. So um, Cormac, on your, I mean, you're, this is this is so cool, like what you've done. Uh, do, do you think that the cool factor has helped you get to, I mean, that's a lot of people. If you said 5,000 uh, different family offices or, um, you know, investors ha have bought in, did it have to be, you know, blockchain? Does it, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's not like AI, let's just not even go there. But like, is that, is that core? Is, do you need to have that? The, yeah, in fact we do. I'd rather avoid it, obviously, if we could. But the, then the question becomes, what are the diamonds in there? Right. Where do they come from? How can you prove that these eight and these eight add up? And so all that information needs to travel with the commodity forever. Okay. And that's why we put the computer chip in there because it stores all of the certificates from GIA. But to our, all of our technology is mainly built in the in this uh, to ensure transparency in the automated market making, the optimization, and the uh, the fact that every bar is the same. So we publish everything on a blockchain, which you can never change. Mm -hmm. Once it's been published, you can't go back and edit. Uh, out any any uh, any falsehood. Is there an auditing? So, uh, sorry, to interrupt. Is there an auditor for that? Like that actually looks at each one of these things and says, "Okay, I agree." A little auditor called Deloitte. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So that I mean that was a big um, challenge to get an auditor. They're very reluctant to have anything to do with blockchain, and obviously we were able to get a world class auditor because of that institutional support and the fact that everything we do is regulator supervised good and but the breakthrough is once we had that all that information on the blockchain the next step was simply to use that for the trading so the blockchain enables this incredible liquidity where w whether you're holding spot you know for yourself whether you're uh, trading to a futures an option an ETF or a digital asset they all are integrated for that transaction. So you don't have different marketplaces breaking up the liquidity of, of the underlying asset. They all trade together. Mm -hmm. And unlike, unlike the farmland or the wine, there's no expertise. We're not choosing the diamonds. The computer must buy all diamonds. And so th there's not the um, expert, uh, like a portfolio manager that you're taking a bet on the key for us is making sure that every single commodity is the same. And so what you're investing in is the global demand for diamond. Yeah. Just like in, with gold, you, you're investing in the global demand for gold. And, you know, uh, the demographics and the supply and demand are what we look to as what's going to impact that, that demand. Yeah, where the, this demand, like for somebody like me, is going to go and somebody that will most likely drive some demand because um, our install base is big enough to do that. I'm not trying to like big time anyone, but like if we're, if there's an ETF and it's part of an asset class like precious metals that we're long right now and we have like line of sight on a real acceleration, then we'll just look for every way we can to manifest that. So for example, if I, for right now I'm not long platinum. There are you know, price volume volatility reasons for that. But if I compared that against the diamond ETF and those attributes were better and I chose that, that would be a decision. But it's also within the context of the, 
the asset class that I'm trying to get exposure to. So this is, thank you for, for, for all that you're, 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 you're cranking on because uh, you know, the, world, the world needs this stuff. Um, but I just want to thank all of you. I mean, this is a pre preliminary for a lot of people. It was a great you know, starting point in education. We, of course, could, uh, and maybe we will. Maybe we'll do like a seminar or conference or something together like where we can you know, get into the whole, uh, actually, Anthony, you can provide the, uh, you can sponsor the, uh, you can sponsor the cocktail hour. Yeah, the beverage is uh, covered. And I don't think that I don't think Cormac's gonna be handing out these things like one by one. But um, but uh, just to you, Keith. <laughs> we'll, we'll provide the location. The yeah. Beautiful local, oh, yeah, yeah, we could we could do that. On a beautiful Vermont farm, I would love that. See, these these are things. These aren't cues. These aren't you know, crypto whatevers. This is uh, this is real stuff. And you guys have done a really good job uh, getting to where you're at. So uh, good luck in the future, and and thanks for spending some time with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I mean, how good is that? I mean, learning about alternative investments, this is how people that actually make money make more money. You, again, preserve and protect your hard-earned capital so you can find unique ways with low volatility to, again, compound those returns. Thanks for joining us.